Okay, I think we can get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, new session of the academic track of the conference. My name is Marco Minghini. Uh, I work at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Um, I'm happy to be the chair of this session. We will have three very interesting presentations. Uh, all of them will be about OpenStreetMap, so we will see a first talk uh, actually given by me and my colleague, Alexander Kotsev, and then two other uh, interesting talks about applications of OpenStreetMap. So, I will now basically introduce the first speakers again, myself and Alex. So we will be happy to give this talk about comparison uh, between Inspire and OpenStreetMap data and to start a discussion on how we can make the most out of the two words. Um, so. The starting point of this is the acknowledgement of the dramatic changes occurred over the last few decades in the way uh, geospatial information is produced, is accessed, and, uh, and um, exchanged. We all know that until the last century, basically mapping and management of geospatial data was a prerogative of professionals and national mapping agencies. But then we have these two uh, revolutionary terms uh, coined. In 1994, the concept of SDI introduced in an executive order of the then US president, Clinton. And in 2007, Professor Michael Goodchild introduced a very fortunate term, uh, VGI, or Volunteer Geographic Information. What's the difference? Very obvious. So SDIs are usually driven by governments or NMAs. They, make usually, uh, they are usually based on OGC standards, which began to appear at the end of last century. VGI means project where data is collected by people. This was made possible uh, by a set of technological advancements mobile devices, uh, web 2.0, open access to satellite imagery, and so on. And I think most of you are academics, so you really know how um, huge is the diffusion of VGI projects in a number of, of disciplines. So in this context, we decided to focus on the two most relevant initiatives for Europe, uh, Inspire, or the infrastructure for spatial information in Europe, as an example of an SDI, and uh, OpenStreetMap, or OSM, as a VGI project. We have multiple purposes in our work. The core of the work will be on a comparison between Inspire and OSM for all these characteristics. So the overall approach of the project, the spatial scope, the structure and encoding of the data, the way to access the data and licensing. And we will try to highlight the differences and to um, highlight also the pros and the cons of the, of the two. Then we will make a um, review of the availability and the maturity of Phosphor-G solutions specifically developed for uh, inspire an OSM and finally we will um, draw some conclusions and uh, start a discussion on how we can integrate and take the most out of these two initiatives. We decided to give this presentation uh, in a combined way so from now on there will be a kind of a ping pong between uh, Alex the inspire man and, and myself the open street map uh, alternative so please Alex. <laughs> um. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, yeah, so I will be talking about Inspire most of the time. As I think uh, most of you have already heard, if you didn't know before, uh, the Phosphor G conference, Inspire is uh, a pan European, it's a European piece of legislation, a directive which, which has this uh, overall objective of establishing a European spatial data infrastructure. So for all 28 uh, member states of the uh, European Union. And this is quite a complex task. Uh, think only of the diversity that we have uh, here in Europe. Uh, think of all the languages that we speak. Uh, in the European Union we, we speak 24 languages. There are three alphabets and uh, you can imagine uh, what, what the diversity and all the challenges that it brings. And if we want to bring this uh, data together, which makes full sense, provided uh, that uh, this is essential for environmental policies, environmental phenomena, as we know, no, usually no borders. So wildfires, floods, uh, environmental hazards need harmonized uh, data on a continental, if not sometimes a global scale. So this is what Inspire is actually addressing uh, for, for Europe. It provides a comprehensive uh, framework uh, for the interoperability of spatial uh, data and is put in place in order to support uh, the informed uh, policy making process. It's not new, uh, it entered into force in 2007, uh, and uh, we see it a lot uh, at the Joint Research Center where both of us uh, work, as, uh, that it is important because it is uh, creating a process that is unlocking uh, increasing amounts of uh, geospatial data uh, uh, and uh, uh, is uh, also relates uh, to the um, change uh, of a mindset. So public sector authorities that uh, work under Inspire, 
uh, really uh, change the way in which uh, they, they, they work uh, with data. We did some preparation, of course, uh, for, for this uh, talk. We, we looked into the uh, Inspire infrastructure uh, with the objectives to see what uh, we will find uh, also for uh, Bucharest. Uh, what you see here is a, a recent ortho photo uh, of, of the city, and uh, yeah, we, there is also an archive available within uh, the Inspire infrastructure. Okay, so what is OpenStreetMap? I think most of you already know. So this is uh, um, a project started in 2004 by Steve Coase to create a free and open uh, database of streets, actually, in London. So this is why it's called OpenStreetMap. But after only a few years, the idea was so successful that uh, the project already extended from UK only to the whole world and from streets only to basically anything. No? Uh, so it's called OpenStreetMap, but actually the, the output is not a map. The main output is a database, so it's a geospatial database of vector features. Um, although, of course, the most popular output of the project is probably the map that you can just see at OpenStreetMap.org. This is just uh, this map actually centered on the place where we are now. Uh, so let's start comparing things. Uh, we start with the overall approach. So uh, Inspire as a directive is a top-down initiative, so it's legislatively defined. But at the same time, there is a community which is established, so there is also this uh, bottom-up movement. But in any case, we see it more as a top-down approach, provided that uh, it's a piece of European legislation. Uh, in scope, as mentioned, uh, public sector data, uh, 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 and then there is this process also uh, for transposition. So the European directive is being uh, translated into the legislations of all the European Union member states. So uh, the directive itself is a relatively short uh, piece of text, and then each of the member states uh, has declared on the national level how they intend uh, to implement uh, the directive. Uh, to just put some numbers behind uh, the, 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 this concept, if we look into uh, Inspire, we currently see within this infrastructure more than 7,200 uh, uh, data providers uh, uh, to, um, to have contributed already data sets. And we see also uh, uh, an upward uh, trend. We see those numbers growing. So. Uh, we see more and more data made available, more and more services uh, made available. There is a community uh, of implementers, of users uh, in Europe, uh, and we have an annual conference. Uh, I use the opportunity to invite you. In Helsinki, we will have a technical event uh, in October. Uh, where we will be discussing implementation issues and evaluated uh, applications that sit on top of Inspire data. Next year, uh, in May, we will have uh, the annual conference uh, in, in Dubrovnik. Uh, so you are, again, uh, uh, very much welcome to join us there. Okay, so OpenStreetMap is the opposite, of course, is a bottom-up initiative. Um, if you ask me how many people contributed data to the, to the database, the answer is more than one million. But uh, the number of registered users, so the users who created an account, which is mandatory to contribute, is much higher. It's 5.5 million. Look at the blue line here. 5.5 uh, million. So this means there are a lot of users, people that actually create an account but do not contribute. And this is actually typical in crowdsourcing projects. So it's also absurd in Wikipedia. But this is another story. So governance. Uh, in Inspire, uh, sorry, in OpenStreetMap, the project is supported but not controlled by the OpenStreetMap Foundation, which is a not-for-profit organization uh, providing legal support to the project, uh, promoting fundraising to ensure its sustainability and managing the servers. It's organized into a board and several working groups dealing with specific aspects such as communication, vandalism, uh, licensing issues, and so on. Very important to say that uh, the data is not owned by the foundation but is owned only by the contributors. We also have a very strong community, of course, and again, like it is in Inspire, uh, also the OSM community meets annually in a dedicated event. It's called the State of the Map. This year will be in Heidelberg, so I took the chance to invite you all in Heidelberg from 21st to 23rd of October, so very close. Uh, that's a picture of State of the Map 2018 uh, that, were, that took place in Milan, in Italy. Okay, thematic scope. Inspire has to do with environment, so that there are those 34 uh, spatial data themes uh, uh, that um, um, cover, as you can see, uh, different aspects that uh, relate uh, to each other and to protecting 
the European environment. Don't see them as silos. Uh, those are distinct uh, data themes, but there are lots of horizontal linkages between them. The, uh, the reason why there are those linkages is because Inspire uh, uh, has, uh, in a collaborative manner, um, developed uh, different uh, data models that are reusing the same uh, data types, uh, the same concepts, and same principles. So that is why the idea here is that uh, those uh, um, have, uh, can be reused, the data from those different data teams can be reused in, for example, a cross-domain uh, use cases or in cross-border uh, use uh, cases. And then there are also, uh, it's an object-oriented uh, modeling that uh, uh, has been followed in Inspire, so there are roughly 300 uh, 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 40 spatial object uh, uh, types with uh, a particular set of attributes that can be extended if needed uh, to meet uh, particular uh, use cases. And there is also um, uh, spatio-temporal data, so it's not only spatial data, there is data, uh, data from sensors uh, is uh, being considered. Uh, and is included as well as uh, uh, historic uh, uh, data, so uh, uh, spatial objects that do not uh, exist anymore in, in the physical world uh, out there, but uh, fall within the scope of Inspire. Okay, OpenStreetMap, as I said, was started as a database of streets only, but then it evolved into what is today the richest and the most diverse geospatial database available. As a matter of fact, any object uh, having a physical position on the Earth and being verifiable can be added to the database. So the result is that the spatial scope of OSM is in general wider than Inspire, but uh, historical events such as environmental observations as well as objects that do not exist anymore in the physical world cannot be added to the database as well as for all the raster data. Orthophotos, for instance, are available in Inspire but not in OpenStreetMap. There is actually a list of all the spatial object types available in OSM. This is maintained by the community and available on a wiki page called the Map Features. This is just the link and this is just one uh, small screenshot of the, of the page. Data structure, this is partly an Inspire conference, so every, uh, partly an Inspire presentation, sorry. So every Inspire presentation has to have at least one UML diagram inside, so I check the UML diagram box. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, the, the, the reason why the UML is there is not because you need to be reading it, uh, definitely not, uh, but uh, in, in this particular case. But uh, the idea here is that uh, Inspire is based on a conceptual model of the world, and uh, which is being expressed as UML. And then from this UML, uh, we, we can derive uh, different encodings. Uh, we have the default encoding, which is GML in the case of Inspire, understandable because the, the, the directive entered into force uh, uh, 12 years ago. But there are also newer, uh, different alternative encodings for Inspire data. Uh, uh, GeoJSON uh, being uh, the one that was recently developed, and there is some work uh, already ongoing uh, about uh, GeoPackage. Uh, so uh, we can start from the same conceptual model and derive uh, different encodings depending on our preferences, uh, our particular use cases, and the requirements of our stakeholders. There are certain uh, central components as well. Uh, there is a registry which maintains uh, sets of uh, different uh, code lists, uh, uh, as the, the different uh, um, um, values that are being reused by the different uh, uh, data models. This registry also addresses issue, issues such as uh, multilinguality. It stores persistent uh, identifiers of, of, of different uh, um, components of the data models. And then there is a validation uh, process as well. So the idea is that uh, data providers encode their uh, uh, data following uh, uh, the, the requirements, and then they have this opportunity to check their services, to check their uh, data models. Uh, they, they, they get confronted against uh, uh, a comprehensive set of validation rules. Okay, in Inspire, uh, in, in OpenStreetMap, instead, the, the data model is based on a flat data structure, so this is one of the main differences. Um, so this means that in OpenStreetMap, any object, so whatever is the kind of object, can be only described by an element, which specifies the geometry, so only three types, nodes, ways, and relations, without entering the details, and then uh, any element has one or more tags, which specifies the attributes. These are always simple attributes just based on key value pairs. So this is a big difference because in Inspire, 
uh, there's an object-oriented model, so we have predefined object with a predefined set of, let's say, attributes. In this case, you can define anything by just one element and any number of tags you want. So it's a flat data structure, so this allows uh, any GIS client to basically handle OSM data without the need of specific uh, functionality or transformation. Although the, the original encoding of OSM is still XML based, this is just a node representing an address. Um, tags are flexible, this is another big difference. So um, there is this page documented, maintained by the community with a list of uh, tags or uh, properties of the um, special object types, but in principle contributors are free to introduce or to use new uh, tags. Uh, as a consequence, we don't have in OSM a reference validator or an official software that validates uh, and gives compliance. We have a lot of validation tools which either check for geometry or topology mainly uh, or for tags, but they check things like that deprecated tags are not used or um, conflicting tags are not used together and so on. Coordinate reference systems, uh, of course, uh, um, considering the European uh, territory, there are specific two-dimensional and three-dimensional CRS that are defined, uh, but there, is also, there are also mechanisms which are currently in, in discussion uh, within the uh, Inspire community for making uh, data available in other coordinate reference systems. The requirement there being that those other uh, coordinate reference systems uh, need to be uh, um, publicly available and there should be um, the opportunity for conversion uh, from, from one of, of those to the ones that are already uh, defined beforehand. In terms of uh, OpenStreetMap, considering that uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest use case is web mapping, we have the WGSA 84, no three-dimensional component uh, there. So in a way, there is uh, CRS com com compatibility is uh, in intrinsic uh, with regard in the case of OSM. Data access, uh, we have many ways of accessing Inspire uh, data. Uh, the whole infrastructure is uh, strongly influenced by the international standards, uh, the OGC standards uh, in particular. It follows, uh, uh, there is a service-oriented uh, approach where data sits uh, usually close to the data provider and then uh, the different uh, services are being uh, Harvested, uh, uh, there is, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there are mm, the, the so-called network services in Inspire for the, discover, the, the discovery, so uh, metadata for viewing, WMS, WMTS, and for downloading, Atom feeds, uh, WFS, SOS, and uh, web uh, coverage uh, service. Uh, Inspire is also looking into the new ways of uh, uh, the newly emerging OGC uh, standards, uh, the newly uh, emerging APIs. Uh, and then we have uh, the central Inspire Geo portal, which is the single access point uh, to the uh, whole uh, infrastructure. But it is, again, one of many perspectives. Open data catalogs harvest Inspire data. There are national uh, Geo portals that expose it. Uh, so there are many ways of really getting uh, hold of the content. In OpenStreetMap, again, the picture is very different. First of all, we don't have metadata catalogs because metadata are mostly already included in the tags and typically data search and access happens through the tags. Apart from this, there are several ways to uh, get uh, OSM data. The easiest one is from the OSM website by just using the export button and then selecting a region you want to download. Then we also have uh, APIs in OSM. Uh, there's the OSM API, which is the main one. This, is, uh, this provides read and write access to the database, so it's also used by the editors to actually write data. Um, it's not actually recommended for massive downloads. There's the overpass API, uh, which is typically used through the popular web interface overpass turbo. This is just a query to extract the museums in Bucharest. And then there's also this quite a new uh, product, the awesome platform provided, developed by the great team at the Heidelberg University, which also allows to access the history of the data because OSM also provides not just the data itself, but also the history. So information on which user edited which object at which time. If you want to download the whole database uh, of the whole world with or without the history, you should download these two files, the planet and the full history planet. As you can see, several uh, tens of gigabytes. 
but there are also companies and organizations providing predefined extracts of OSM data, which means predefined special object types, only buildings, only land use features, and so on, usually in user-selected uh, formats and user-selected uh, coordinate reference systems. License is also a point of difference because, first of all, in Inspire, the directive does not mandate the use of one specific license. The picture, the result is that the picture is very heterogeneous. So member states are using different licenses, sometimes licenses that are really custom and expressed in national languages. Um, and only a portion of the data is actually um, open access. In OpenStreetMap, uh, instead, license uh, interoperability is, in a sense, intrinsically ensured because all the database is available under the ODBL, the Open Database License. Actually, this is true only for data contributed after 2012 because before there was CC by SA. In terms of tools, so there's a um, rich ecosystem. I think we all recognize the majority of the logos here. So there are many ways of implementing the, all, all the different aspects. And data providers choose depending on their particular uh, use cases. So no one single solution. OK. In OSM, again, uh, OSM by nature has stimulated development of open source software, while Inspire has also stimulated development of uh, proprietary software. What we can say here is that, as I mentioned before, the flat data structure actually allows OSM by default to be used in uh, any GIS software, but there are still some specific software developed to work with OSM data, mainly for clients, as you can see here, mainly plugins. Uh, what are these doing? Uh, basically, they are uh, using the APIs to automate the download of OSM data in the software, or they are just retrieving OSM tiles from the OSM server or third-party services, as in the web clients. So let's discuss a little bit. As you see, immediately uh, there are uh, th th those two different initiatives are, are, are quite quite different, uh, as a matter of fact. And we were not going to argue which is better. From our point of view, it clearly makes sense that they are used uh, uh, together, and this would benefit a large uh, uh, spectrum of uh, stakeholders, ranging from public authorities, professionals, businesses, researchers, and so on. I think the example was pretty clear. What we showed you uh, for um, Bucharest, we can have the uh, vector data, for example, from uh, OSM, but then there we will not see the, the orthophoto imagery, which we can get from Inspire. So combining those in, in any of our uh, open source or uh, proprietary tools would, would really benefit uh, um, a lot. And there are also uh, the things that one initiative can learn uh, from the other uh, and uh, uh, vice versa. So yeah, and in, in any case, because we are the Phosphor4G conference, uh, it is important here in this context to highlight that there are mature uh, solutions, and they are very often the same solutions that uh, can be used in order to consume Inspire and make use of Inspire and uh, OpenStreetMap uh, data, and it uh, uh, is uh, regarding uh, um, um, searching, uh, transformation, encoding of the data, processing, spatial analysis. Um, and so on. There are still uh, some isolated uh, uh, case studies w where we see the uh, Inspire and OSM data being merged, uh, but uh, this would need uh, uh, additional attention. Those cases need to be uh, studied uh, in addition. Uh, in the end of the day, yeah, effort is required, but uh, yeah, it is uh, yeah, important to highlight that from a user perspective, very often, the user does not really care where does the data come from. If it satisfies the particular needs, then uh, users are, are happy. And this is where we want to, to arrive uh, with this integration of OSM and Inspire. Thanks. There is a nice article uh, written by uh, Marco, myself, and our colleague uh, uh, Michael Lutz. Uh, uh, check it out. And then we use the opportunity. You or me? Yeah, to maybe let's, let's leave first a couple of minutes for questions and then we can, well, let's leave a couple of minutes for questions. In the meantime, you can read the, the screen. So thanks again. Are there any questions? Thank you. OK. Uh, really very nice stuff, guys, done. Uh, just one comment and one question. Comment goes for the licensing. Um, just forgot that uh, thanks to GRC currently there is uh, ongoing activity to allow filtering of Inspire open data. So hopefully in the next uh, near future uh, users will be able to 
to filter the the stuff from the Inspire already under the Open Data License, which is a really good uh, initiative. And I was wondering whether you already heard about some use cases in the member states where if there are no data available uh, meeting the Inspire specific themes requirements from the public sector, if there are some efforts, for example, to provide uh, these uh, specific themes uh, um, from the OSM to the Inspire infrastructure. Thanks. Um, th thanks for the question and the comment. Uh, yes, re regarding the licensing, this is uh, we were trying to help by identifying, but there was a study we, which showed that there are more than 800 different types of licenses in Inspire, uh, consider the different languages and the situation. So we're at this stage now where we want to really benchmark and see what is the situation and, and uh, yes, then identify what is available and discuss in a bilateral manner with, with uh, the, the data providers about missing licenses or things that uh, can possibly be improved. On your second uh, uh, question regarding the, um, uh, the use of OSM data as a substitute of Inspire data, I personally don't know of uh, such an example because I think public sector data has often this legal meaning behind it, uh, authoritative uh, quality stamped and so on, but the other uh, uh, process we see, so we see data which is from the public sector authorities that uh, the public uh, data provider has considered it valuable and we see these contributed into OpenStreetMap and then Spain is a good example in that case. But as our concluding slides said, there are very limited examples of this interplay between the both and we would gladly, together with Marco, dive into looking into studying, but this would need more effort. Thank you, Alex. I would close the session here unless there is one very short uh, question. Okay, thanks a lot. This is just a reminder about this Helsinki event that Alex was mentioning at the beginning. We have kind of a hackathon style for this event with the so-called data challenges. Any team of developers or technical people can still apply by the 8th of September and there are prizes and benefits worth more than 20,000 euros. So have a look at the website and you are there's still some time to, to apply. So that's it. Let's wait for uh, other three, four minutes, and then I invite the next speaker to prepare for the presentation. Thank you.